Progressive Democrats are warning the White House that the party will see pain at the polls if they don't deliver on key policies and are encouraging the president to make a run around the Senate. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna of California, author of the new book, Dignity in a Digital Age, Making Tech Work for All of Us. Congressman, welcome back to Fox News. Thank Thanks. you for having me. Good to have you here. Uh, uh, let me get you to weigh in. I don't need to play the sound bite again because we've already heard it a couple of times, but let me get you to weigh in on what the president said ad lib at the end of that speech yesterday because uh, a lot of people did a double take and it's headlines everywhere around the world right now that the president just called for regime change in Russia. Well, John, let me be very clear. The United States policy is not regime change. It's a negotiated end to this war. Now look, when Putin in Mariupol is bombing theaters with 300 kids there, where there's a sign saying children, and he's bombing that, any human being would express frustration, and the president was speaking from his heart, but it's not the U.S. policy to seek regime change. He, he has a habit, or, or, or a propensity, I don't want to say it's a habit, he has a propensity to sometimes say the quiet part out loud. Like when he said, well, if it's a minor incursion, that's one thing. I'm sure that was a conversation that occurred in the Situation Room that he just blurted out loud. And there are a lot of people in this world who would probably like to see Putin go because he's been bad news for an awfully long time. But when you're the president of the United States, you can't just say stuff like that. The president, I think, is a straight shooter. He's deeply empathetic. I'm sure he's so frustrated with these scenes of children, women being sure killed. He is. But I think the White House has uh, been clear. They have been disciplined and they've said, we need a negotiated end to this war. That has to be with Putin uh, as a settlement. It's not the policy regime change. There's no support in the Democratic Congress for regime change. We've been the party against regime change for the past 20 years. But do you think that Putin is going to take this and try to use it to his advantage? Putin takes anything and tries to use it to his advantage. But let's see what we need to do. We need to make it as difficult for him. This Look at what this president has done, because I heard Senator Scott earlier. We've provided the anti-tanks. We've provided the anti-aircrafts. We've provided uh, over $2 billion of assistance. We have the most punishing sanctions. This president has rallied NATO. Look, it's easy to Monday morning quarterback and say, oh, you could have done one more thing. But this president, by and large, has been tough, and we're going to get Putin to negotiate to bring a ceasefire to the war. If it were up to you, would you give them the mix? Because Zelensky asked for them again on the weekend. I would not have U.S. bases do that. Let's be clear what that means. It means U.S. service members are going to go up in those skies in Ukraine and be shot at by Russian planes. I know it's easy to come on Fox News or CNN and talk tough, but are you flying those planes? Are you going to answer to those families if American service members get killed? I don't want to put American service members at risk. If Poland wants to supply those planes, fine. And I want those planes to get to Zelensky, but not at the cost of American lives. Let me ask you about the Iran nuclear deal, because we've been hearing for weeks now that it's close. But one of the pro potential provisions of this would be to allow Russia to buy excess enriched uranium from Iran. And I'm wondering, what sense does it make to allow a country that at every turn is threatening to use nuclear weapons for the first time since the Second World War to give them excess enriched uranium so that they can just hold that as a cudgel over the world? That should not be part of the deal. I mean, the deal hasn't been finalized. I would not support having a Russian exception, given what's going on right now, to allow them to get Iranian oil. I mean, I think we ought to have the world boycotting Russian oil. I've been clear, actually, on India, that I think India ought to be condemning Putin, and India ought not to be getting oil from Russia or China. We ought to rally the world to isolate Putin. Now, India is also getting weapons from Russia, and they're concerned about the flow of weapons, which is why Modi seems to be trying to maintain close ties with Putin. Should the U.S. get in the way of that and say, look, break your ties with Russia, you need some military equipment, we'll give it to you, or is that going to create a big rift with Pakistan? Well, John, I've been the vice chair of the U.S.-India caucus, and I first, India should condemn in the U.N. Putin for the blatant human rights violation. Second, uh, we, they need to realize they have to pick sides. We, the United States, was with them when China invaded uh, India. Putin wasn't there, and it's time for them to buy more weapons from the United States, not on Russia. We got to look at how we can facilitate that and make that easier. We need the India as an ally, ultimately, uh, to contain China. Let me swing to politics, because inflation is raging, the Fed is raising interest rates in California, the average price of gasoline is $6 a gallon. Yet the president keeps talking about, we've got to move toward the green agenda. We've got to move toward the green agenda. A green agenda is fine if you do it over the course of decades. Even if you gave everybody in the country an electric vehicle for free and you converted every home 
to electric heat, the grid wouldn't stand it. So you've got to update the grid as well. I mean, is it a time to put a pause on the push toward the green agenda and say, look, for the meantime, we've got to pump more oil. We've got to help out our European allies. We've got to get prices down. Well, we can do both. Let me say something common sense. Short-term increased production. Here's one way to do it. The federal government can buy back what we're using in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and provide a floor price. That's a bipartisan proposal. Let's pass it. Long-term, let's have a moonshot on clean technology. If John F. Kennedy said that we need to go to the moon to defeat the Soviets, you want to defeat the petrostates of Russia, Iran, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, let's have a moonshot on renewable energy. So let's have the short-term increase of production, long-term a moonshot on renewable energy. So in terms of the November election, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said in recent days that she thinks that the Democratic Party is in trouble because of the president. Listen to what she said. This is really about the collapse in support among young people, among the Democratic base, feeling like they are not, that they worked overtime to get this president elected and they aren't necessarily being seen. Is she right? The president has done an extraordinary job. We've passed the American Rescue Plan. We've passed infrastructure. Here's the biggest thing we ought to highlight. $20 billion Intel in, is investing in Ohio. You talk about the revitalization of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. We're delivering. Let's pass the chips out, get it to the president. Of course, there are other things we ought to do, but this president has met the moment in very difficult circumstances. Uh, Americans might disagree with you. His approval rating is only 40 percent in the latest Reuters Ipsos poll. Uh, just before we go, I want to ask you a question about your book, because the political discourse in this country has sunk to new lows. Everybody's yelling at each other, and much of the reason why they're yelling at each other is because of social media. Is social media ruining this country? No, but social media needs to do better. Uh, several things that they need to do better. They ought not to have incitement of violence. They ought not to discriminate against viewpoints, allow for free speech. And, and they ought to make sure that teenagers aren't getting manipulated in ways that are causing depression and suicide. So absolutely, there need to be more smarter regulations on social media. Congressman Khanna, it's a pleasure to have you in. Thanks so much for making time today. Thank you for giving me the chance. Hope to see you again soon on our program, America Reports. I'd love to. All right, terrific. See you soon.